Hi, I'm Chris, and this is my 1974 Piper Aero 2. Popular Piper Aero features 200 horsepower, retractable landing gear, and a constant speed propeller. Still in production today, the Aero is a versatile aircraft commonly used for training, local pleasure flights, or cross-country trips. Speed and complexity make this airplane a perfect step up for pilots looking to advance or hone their skills. Let's talk to Chris about his 1974 Piper Aero 2. What got me into aviation, uh, my dad was a pilot and his father was a pilot as well too. Uh, they were both Air Force uh, aviators. My dad flew F4s uh, to, to start with and his dad flew P-51 Mustangs. Uh, and then also on my mom's side, uh, my grandfather on her side uh, was also an aircraft mechanic uh, and um, master sergeant for uh, what was the Army Air Force before it separated and became the, its own Air Force. And my dad uh, finished his career as an MD-11 pilot, uh, spent about 30 years with Federal Express, um, and he's the one that really got me into aviation. Uh, so I have a commercial license, a commercial multi, and I'm also instrument rated. Uh, the Piper Aero 2 is the perfect trainer plane. Uh, so I started in the Cessna 150s, 152s, 172s, uh, what typically any student would start in. And those were fun uh, to begin with, just to learn how to fly. Uh, but a low wing's always cooler, obviously. So I wanted something with a little bit more power, a little bit faster, uh, retractable gear, to, uh, just to kind of get the training and experience with that. Uh, and I found the Piper Aero 2 was the perfect plane for that. Uh, it can hold four full-size adults. Uh, we cruise right at 150 miles an hour, and best thing is it has AC. So I bought it, uh, right now it has uh, right at 7,000 hours uh, total time on the airframe. It has a Lycoming IO360 C1C, uh, which is rated right at 200 horsepower, and unfortunately uh, it's not a high performance because it has to be 201 or higher. Uh, but we do have a couple STC modifications on the intake and the exhaust side that it does have a little bit more than 200 horsepower. We, we have the engine modifications, uh, the air filter, the Tempest air filter, and the stainless steel exhaust on it. Uh, we also have a few speed mods, um, the flap gap seals and a couple of the trims around the fuel tank. We also have the wing root trim uh, that makes it go a little bit faster, a little bit more efficient. Uh, yeah, so our fuel burn is right at 10 gallons an hour. Uh, upwards of seven or 8,000 feet, you can actually dial it back to about eight gallons an hour. Uh, so it is fairly efficient. We have four hours, 45 minutes of fuel on board. Uh, and we can go about 700 miles on full tank. Uh, my primary mission right now is to build hours, uh, hopefully end up in the airline somewhere, um, hopefully move in packages, not people. But it's also a uh, fun vacation uh, family plane as well too. So I fly my mom, my sister, and a few of my friends around to different destinations. We go to Houston all the time. We go to Houston, uh, Austin often. Um, and it will, we can go all the way up to Oklahoma. I fly over to see my dad in Shreveport. Yeah. And as long as I own a plane, I'm never going to drive again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You ready to go fly? Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Coming up. All right. Good. Good. Yeah. And you got the top latch. Yep. You got it. Yep. Nice. Almost like you know what you're doing. I've been in one of these four before, <laughs> once or twice. Clear prep. Cranberry traffic pattern. Right hand pattern to runway one nine. Back check. Left hand uh, I got pattern you loud and clear. to loud runway and clear. one. Perfect. Cranberry traffic at Arrow, November 722. Whiskey Mike at the GA ramp. Taxi for departure, runway one nine. Cranberry. Brakes check. And we'll go up here and do our run up. Sounds good. And first things first, watch all your right. knees. We're going to come all the way back. Do our little flight controls check there. And our handy dandy yeah, mirror. Yeah, we got to show this off. Yeah. Down. The rudder mirror. And rudder checks. I'll run it up to 2,000 RPMs. Right back checks. Left back checks. We're gonna cycle our prop. We do have a constant speed prop in here. First, we're looking for a drop in RPM. Second, we're looking for a rise in the manifold pressure. And last but not least, we're looking for a drop in our oil pressure. And we'll check suction. Suction looks good over there. 
and amps are charging. Oh. Back to idle. And she does idle. We like when we have an happy airplane. <laughs> Fuel pump is on for departure, landing light. Brakes are off, flaps are set. Cranberry traffic, arrow November 722, Whiskey Mike, departing runway 19 with a departure to the east, Cranberry. So I think first we're going to go uh, do a circle over the square. That sounds great. See what that looks like from the air. Let's go do it. I'm ready. And we have a nice 5,000 foot runway out here now. Yes, beautiful brand new runway. Brakes release. Airspeed is alive, 60. There's 70. There's 75, and rotate. Should get a pretty good rate of climb out of her today. Uh, we were getting about a thousand the other day. Wow. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably super cold out. And one of my favorite things, the gear is now coming up. I've always really liked these airplanes. You know, they're really, it's not like they have that much more power than like a Cherokee 180, but that constant speed prop and retractable gear just makes such a makes difference. Makes a world of yeah. difference, absolutely. And it's fun to fly. I feel like it's a good like transition airplane if you're, you know, you've only flown like a 172. And, and that's exactly why Piper designed these. So they yeah. were trying to really capture a market that uh, Cessna wasn't even competing in. Um, yeah. And Mooney was kind of the only competitor for him at the time. And uh, Mooney came out with the uh, 201, right? Um, which is a, a little bit faster than uh -huh. this guy. Uh, but we can actually carry full uh, four full-size passengers. We're in the back of the Mooney. Yeah. Uh, you got to be a midget or something to be able to sit right there. I mean, even some of these Piper models, the Arrow's not bad. The Arrow's pretty comfortable in the back seat. But some of them, I'm pretty small, and I have a hard time sitting in there. Well, and this is the Arrow 2 model, so it's even five inches longer than the original uh, Arrow 1 models. And they, they have an Arrow 3 as well. Uh, right? Arrow 3, uh, and that's still actually being produced by Piper today. Okay. I didn't know that. How much does a brand new Arrow run you? $434,000. You know what? Honestly, that's less than I expected. Right? Actually, <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's affordable, right? Yeah. I mean, shoot, a brand new 172 is that much nowadays. So it's about the same, exactly. I love the uh, the positive handling characteristics of the low wing versus the high wing. It, yeah. it really is your difference between a minivan and a Porsche. Yeah. Agreed. Literally the only downside is I do like being able to see down under me. Yeah. That is the only thing. I mean, Other you than can that, see most of it. That's true. Cranberry traffic arrow 722 Whiskey Mike is beginning our departure to the east at 2,000 feet. We're going to circle the uh, Old Town Square and then head out direct Crescent at Cranberry. It really is a beautiful day for flying. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah. We couldn't have picked a better day. Yeah, no kidding. Good thing we didn't wait. I thought it worked out, yeah. I instruct people out of the uh, Motorsport Ranch in Crescent uh, uh -huh. how to drive supercars and race cars and stuff, right? And uh, we had three incidents that took down three of our cars on oh. Sunday. Oh, yeah. All in one day? All in one day. All in one day. Oh, of course. Nice. Yeah. Wow. But, and that's what we say too, bad things come in threes, right? So. Yeah, it's like I always say with flying, like with a go, no-go decision, you know, we talk about the I'm safe and everything going on. I'm like, you get three strikes in your day. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be aviation related, but you go and you wake up and you spill your coffee on yourself. That's strike one. <laughs> and then you go and you get stuck in traffic in, you know, whatever, you're road raging and it's just awful. That's your strike number Someone two. Someone cuts you off, yeah. Right. And then you go, if you get that third strike, it doesn't matter what it is, you probably shouldn't get in an airplane Great that day. Traffic. Yeah, I've had a few of those days. We have the... There's our beautiful little town square down there. Uh, the and courthouse. It's, and it's so nice making like the steep turns and stuff in this bad boy too. I mean, we're right at 30 degrees and there's not yeah. any back pressure to it. Right? Whereas in those Cessnas, you're constantly pulling back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and these big old fat wings on this thing too. It just yeah. sits so stable. Yeah, so that's the other thing. Uh, 
the wingspan's a little bit longer than no. the uh, Arrow ones, okay. uh, and our stabilator is a little bit bigger as well too. Gotcha. Uh, so it makes it a little bit more stable, exactly like you yeah. said. Grand Prix traffic, on Bonanza, seven six nine X-ray phase taxiing from the ramp out to runway one nine. Grand Prix traffic. That was a beautiful Bonanza. I was gonna say out that there. was a nice Man, looking that Bonanza. Thing. I love that paint scheme. Hey Bonanza, Grand Prix, I love that paint scheme on there. Oh, thanks, man. I do, too. I wish it was mine. Grand <laughs> <laughs> oh. Prix traffic arrows up to two. Whiskey Mike, we're departing the town square, and we're headed to Red Crescent at 2,500 in Grand Prix. Cool. So this is the actual track that you work at then? This is. Here? Yeah. Cool. I'm sure I've flown over it at some point, but... Well, that's one of those things that uh, I'm trying to do myself, is kind of close that gap between the race car drivers and uh, aviation enthusiasts. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap between the two. I mean, if you can do one, you can definitely do the other, and you're probably going to enjoy the other one, too. It takes a real feel for it, but yeah, yeah. if you do one, exactly, you're probably going to enjoy the yeah. other, as long as you can afford it. <laughs> oh. Bridgeport, Travis, Kelly, 550. Airplanes aren't even Let's, expensive. Uh, down one, 1A Bridgeport. Honestly, the uh, the cheapest part about owning an airplane is the purchase price. Yep, I've heard that <laughs> before. <laughs> the maintenance is really what kills you. Yeah. Maintenance and hangar fees and all the extra stuff that goes on there. Right. You said this thing is about to go an anti-annual, right? It is, yeah. How much does that cost you for an annual on an arrow? So an annual on an arrow starts at right about $2,000. Okay. Uh, and that's just for the basic right. uh, teardown and inspection. Right. Uh, Obviously, they are going to find something, and that's kind of their job. So, uh, yeah. if they don't find anything, I'm kind of suspicious of it yeah. <laughs> because oh, I know yeah. it is a 1974 aircraft. Uh, but throughout the year, um, I've had a couple different uh, run-ins with the uh, maintenance on it, and we spent about two or three thousand dollars each time. Okay. Uh, just for diagnosis and the actual repair as well, too. Okay, that's not too too bad. That is again, like you're saying, the nice thing about the single engine is. There's only one of them to maintain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and we're uh, we're right at 760 hours on this particular engine. Oh uh, wow, that's not bad at all. It's 2,000 time before overhaul. Yeah. Uh, Lycoming IO 360 C1C. Okay. Uh, that's not bad. There's a lot of life left in it then. Yeah, there's plenty, of, especially for me. Right. Um, so that's I am planning on upgrading sometime in the future, uh, hopefully sooner than later. <laughs> Uh, once you got the taste of having one, now it's just upgrade, oh, yeah. upgrade, upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming when you come buzz these guys, most of them probably hear the airplane and look up and go, oh, there's Chris again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a little racetrack that I instructed out here. And it uh, looks like they're actually doing police training right now. Uh, so oh. we do we do training with the Dallas and Fort Worth Police Departments. Uh -huh. uh, and they're doing the evasive maneuvers and uh, yeah, chase training. That's fun. And uh, they actually pay us to get out there and be the uh, chasey. Oh, that's got to be fun. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> it's a blast. I actually get to legally run from the cops? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so other than, you know, the police training, like, what does it typically look like when someone comes out to you? Like, what are what is usually their mission or... Uh, typically, it's just to have fun. Well, okay. And when we at least try to convince them that it's just fun. Uh, <laughs> so, some people do get a little a bit too serious about it, and they try to make it a competition or a challenge. Right. And, and sometimes if it's people that have been out there before and that we know uh, or actually have some idea of, of how to uh, conduct themselves on a racetrack, uh, especially when there's other cars involved out there that don't know what they're doing. Uh -huh. um, we do. We'll give them a little bit of a challenge and say, hey, uh, you guys get to run out here together and mm -hmm. kind of push the cars a little bit more than what we would give freedom to the other people. Nice. Yeah, and like we said, some of the cool upgrades that we have, we do have the Garmin 430 WAS in here. Uh, and because we do have the 330 ES, uh, we do have ADS-B in and out. That is really nice to have. And it's super helpful, especially around here with some of these smaller airports. Yeah. Uh, you can see we have four or five here. Uh, in the Class E airspace, it's kind of like the wild, wild rest, right? You don't oh, yeah. have to be on the radios. You don't have to be telling people what you're doing. You can go yeah. anywhere and everywhere. Do you do a lot of IFR flying in this? I do. I say, it has a nice panel for IFR. It is, yeah. We got the dual VORs. Yeah. Um, got the 430 yeah. WAS, obviously. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not anything super duper fancy but it's perfect to get the job done you know without having to spend thousands of dollars in avionics upgrades and especially with everything going to our now yeah exactly you just need the gps five miles go ahead and take her on back in that is perfect i forgot how busy these frequencies get on a clear day oh man 
But yeah, so you were asking about IFR. That's yeah. pretty much anywhere I go, even on a day like today. Yeah. I do file IFR and I fly IFR. Uh, just have that added safety of ATC. Absolutely. Plus, it's always good just to keep yourself proficient. Grand Prix traffic, Aero 72, Whiskey Mike, 4 mile, final 1 9, Grand Prix. Bridgeport traffic, 550, five, left three down, down. We're going to bring a little bit of power back into there. Arrest that sink rate. And fuel pump and landing light are on. The good old gumps check. And we're in our flaps range. And we have three green. We're going to check that three times before we touch down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And one of the cool things about the Arrow 2, uh, it has what's called a page system. Pitch for traffic, okay. 2 8 Delta Echo, 3000. Uh, Piper Auto Gear Extension System. Uh, so if your airspeed gets below a particular airspeed, I believe it's about uh, 80. Uh, 80 or 90 miles an hour in this bad boy. Uh, it automatically drops the gear for you. That is nice. It is very handy. Just to have that added just in case. Exactly. It's an added safety measure because uh, like we were saying, this is a training aircraft for people transitioning from fixed gear high wing uh, into a retract uh, low wing. Right. And you do have extra stuff going on too uh, with the constant speed prop, so now you got extra knobs and stuff in the mix. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times, yeah, you are training for IFR and everything too because you're planning to go commercial or at least right. step up in the ranks. Right, so then you get on that instrument approach, so you're dealing with all that too. It's easy and to miss stuff. And a lot of it comes at you very quickly. Yep. And we're going to slow her down to right at 90 over the numbers. And there's our third notch of flaps. And this airplane likes to sink, right? It likes to yeah. sink pretty good, exactly. And there's our 90 over the numbers. And you just hold her on up. Nothing to it. Very nice. Awesome, what an awesome day to go fly. It's beautiful out. Oh, this is perfect. Thank you for taking me up and doing this with us. Yeah, thank you. And we're just going to expedite that taxi because we've got to go about a mile down the runway and then turn around. That is the one thing <laughs> I, about this new runway. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, why didn't they just put in a, one more taxi another way. taxiway? <laughs> Primary traffic arrow 722 Whiskey Pike, clear of the active taxi to the GA ring, Granberry. All right, thanks a lot, Chris, taking me up today. It was a lot of fun. It's always a pleasure flying with you, and the Arrow is an awesome airplane. Thanks for flying with me, Dakota. <laughs> I'll see you later. Thank you. And as always, thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe. We've got a lot more coming. Um, and if you have an airplane that you want to show off, make sure to send me an email, dakota at flyingdoodles.com. And thank you to our patrons. Make sure to check us out there, patreon.com forward slash flyingdoodles.